Do you want to know the strategies I used to create one of the largest multidisciplinary clinics in Canada? That's what we're talking about today. Hi, my name is Mark Bentz and I'm the owner of one of the largest multidisciplinary clinics in Canada. I started the virtual CEO because I wanted to take clinic owners from overworked, underpaid, to living life on your terms and a clinic that is extremely profitable. Let's talk about what's the most important thing, right? You're running this clinic. It's a multidisciplinary clinic probably, okay? You've got everything going on. How do you make this thing wildly profitable? How do you make it so you can do whatever you want, whenever you want? That's what I'm doing now. I'm doing whatever I want, when I want. Actually, I'm just booking a trip to Fiji to work with Tony Robbins in a Life Wealth Mastery. And that's what I dream of. I would love helping people. But the point is, I'm doing it on my terms. And so I wanna share the strategies that have created this foundation so I'm able to do it on my terms. Okay, first thing you wanna look at when you're hiring people, okay? You are gonna need a big clinic or whatever that clinic means to you. You're gonna need what you want out of this clinic. To do that, you need to bring people around you. When you bring people around you, hire for the attitude, not the skill set. So I'll give you an example. Uh, physio, chiro, massage, acupuncture, whatever it may be. Don't go for the highest trained, honor achieving uh, practitioner. Because really, when you drill down, when you really drill down, and, and Tony Robbins puts a, this into a very good statement. He asks you to say this to yourself. What business are you in? What business are you really in? So I could say, oh, what business am I in? I'm in providing health care uh, to the public. Yeah, that's what I do. But really what I'm in, I'm into customer service. I'm into the best experience possible. And of course, that involves providing health care to the public but it also involves listening to the client, knowing what their needs are, figuring out ahead of time how to respond to them. And that could boil down, just down to the, the booking system you use. And again, it's the attitude, it's not the skill set of that practitioner. Don't go after that high achieving sort of individual that has this sort of elite um, position. You want to go after the friendly person, the engaged person, the person that has an attitude that they want to be part of the team. They feel that the team is way bigger than themselves. Because that's how teams win, right? Teams don't win because of these individual, rogue individuals that go off in all different directions and do what they want. Of course, as part of your team, you could have a couple of them in there but don't have them overwhelm the team. So depending on how big you make this thing, you gotta have team players and it all begins with attitude. The people I see doing the best that give me the lifestyle that I have are those people. They come to the office, they love what they do, they're engaged with the admin staff, they're engaged with the client. They're in a good mood. They don't bring their fucking drama to the office. They don't make it all about them. Boy, when you start to have too many of those people on your team, it's brutal. And then you start to fall into the spiral of, oh my God, but they have a practice. They're paying me rent. I can't get rid of them. And you fall into that really terrible spiral. And then they just chew up your culture and spit you out. Ah, it could be awful. So please, please always think of the attitude. And here, when you're looking at front desk, or maybe it's the admin staff in the background, again, it's the attitude. How are they? Are they coming to work? Are they happy? If they're the people answering your phones, responding to your emails, boy, they better want it, right? They better be wanting part of a bigger team. But if it's all about them, I, I recently actually just had a, a person we hired and uh, we went through the whole process 
And at the very end, when they first uh, were left alone on the desk, uh, she goes, I can't do this job. I'm scared of answering the phone. And we're like, what? How did this happen? This is after we trained them on the phone. Like, it was crazy what happened there. And we just obviously picked the wrong person. But here, when you pick the wrong person, you got to be decisive, decisive and get rid of them and get the right person in the right seat to create that outcome that you need. So attitude over skill. You can always train for skill. Always. Okay, second thing you need to do. Numbers, numbers, numbers. So I like to say, there's a mantra, I love numbers, numbers love me. Okay. There's a video below I've linked uh, to, and that's the numbers you need to know uh, for running your business. But I'm going to go through them briefly. Initials. You want to be tracking how many initials are coming in every day, every week, every month. You need to know average number of treatments per client per therapist that's telling you that is there a therapeutic relationship being established if there isn't a therapeutic relationship being established watch out there's no amount of initials that you can bring into that therapist if they can't create create that so it's <laughs> mighty necessary to stare that down third one net income and net income, quite simply, is after all the gross money, all the full, all the billings, everything you've billed, what you bring in, you bill, or the, the clinic bills, all your expenses, everything you've spent to create the clinic you have, what's left over? That's net income. And that, my friend, is where the majority of business are failing. They'll create all this gross income. They'll tell me, oh my God, I've got $500,000 of billings. I like, I don't care. It's lovely. Go tell that to your mom. Maybe your grandmother wants to hear that. I want to know what net income is. Net income produces the lifestyle that you want. And too many people are hallucinating and delusional about their, net, their gross billings. They have expenses that are too high. So then, when you minus the two, their net income is microscopic. Or other clinics I see, they're losing money. And so then they have to work more as a therapist, if they're a therapist that owns the clinic. And they get again into the spiral where they have to overwork to pay for this clinic that they thought was going to give them this lifestyle. And it's actually just a bloody expensive job that's stressing them out, causing you to wonder why you even got in, right? Like, why did I get into this situation? I'm three, four years into this thing, and it, it hasn't created what I thought. So please, please, you got to stare down those numbers.